We are about to hear a miraculous story of hope. But before introducing my guests, consider this. God's will is to heal disease, but we live on a fallen planet and we may go home through the pathway of illness. The trick is to love him so recklessly in the process that you leave nothing on the table when asking for healing except for his sovereignty. Accept his sovereignty. I know that's a think piece, but I think it is also a setup piece. Rosie and Gary Browson were praying for healing while planning a funeral, but they're here and healthy from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We're so happy us. to be here. Oh, Thank you. What a, a story. What a story. A little misleading title, and we'll find out why in just a moment. But take us to March 15th, 2011. That is when your world was shattered. Paint a picture for us. I'm at home by myself. It's 3.30 in the afternoon. The phone rings, and the, uh, my pul pulmonologist is on the other end of the line, and he said, I'm sorry, Mr. Browson, but you have lung cancer. And as a non-smoker, hockey player for over 40 years, and an athlete, never smoker, I might add, we were shocked and devastated. You were 50? I was just turned 50. Yeah. Two boys. Yep, 10 and 13. Yeah. Very impressionable ages, 10 and 13. Yeah. Now, some other things were going on in this scenario. Mm. Uh, Rosie, you were a pretty vibrant young Christian. Yes, yes. The Lord had saved me about nine years earlier, and he had been working with me in the healing ministries, praying for other people for healing. Uh, so I was quite surprised when cancer hit our house, how it shook me in my core. Here I was willing to pray for others, and yet lung cancer diagnosis, and, and the lung cancer, it, it's not very survivable. There's a 16% survive, survival rate. So I was um, devastated. And she was a bit ahead of me in her faith walk. In her spiritual life. <laughs> yes, yes, for sure. Just a bit, and that so, is the treasure. Yes, yeah, so Gary had story. just become a Christian three months earlier before his diagnosis, so. You're so, an engineer. I am. Engineering manager. I am. You say in the book, you like tangibles. I, I need to feel, I need to see, I need to touch. And that's why it was difficult for me to, my faith journey was a little difficult because you, it's, the belief in the unseen. But then I started seeing and hearing. And especially during this journey, there were some very clear signs that God was speaking to me um, and telling us, we didn't recognize it right away, but telling us that things were gonna be okay. I said the title was misleading. You never really were planning a funeral. No, I wasn't. And it's, it's very tongue in cheek because I think what, what happened with me and the Lord is so tender towards our journey and it's almost impossible. When you have doctors saying this is terminal, get your fares in order, it was, it's almost impossible to keep your mind on the Lord. My heart was always steadfast that his will is to heal our diseases um, and bind our wounds. However, my mind would wander. And so I wasn't literally planning a funeral, but I would imagine it. Mm -hmm. What would, what songs would I have? Um, there, it, it didn't last very long in my thought process because God would be quick to say, you know, but we're, we're, we're praying for healing now. Mm -hmm. And so I just would quickly repent and ask, um, just say, I'm sorry, I got my eyes off you. Can we yeah. get back? Let's get back to it. Anxiety, worry, fear, those three monsters, yes. always, always threatening. Yeah. But you, you make a propositional statement that I, I totally agree with and I challenge you. I challenge you at home, uh, even if you think you've been blindsided, and in fact have been blindsided, take a look back because as Rosie says, God does prepare us. Does. Uh, there is a picture in this book. Don't, don't try to get a close up of it, it'll strain you. But um, it, I'm glad it's in here because there is just one thing, six months prior to the diagnosis, a neighbor, another engineering manager, yes. has a piece of paper burnt all around the edges Quickly tell us what that's about. Well, um, Fred and Janet are our neighbors and they came up one summer morning um, and you could just tell by their body language that they were full of trepidation about bringing this piece of paper to us or bringing this story. And we could just tell, I thought, oh no, 
our boys have broken a window at their house, our dog has <laughs> dug up a plant. What is it that they're walking up with this trepidation? And they sat down and told us the story that um, he had been burning his engineering books for hours and hours and hours. Thousands of pages, Thousands I might of add. Pages, Thousands of yeah. pages, yeah. And um, so at the end, it had been like seven hours, and at the end, um, he saw this one little piece of white paper. And the paper, or the notebook that Gary's name was on was in the middle of the stack. So, you know, maybe three hours into the burn or something. And uh, so that it survived that. And when he turned over the paper, it had Gary's name on it. And he said he just knew in his spirit that this was a sign for Gary and I, and he just didn't know what. In those thousands of pages, my name probably appeared once or twice, at the very most, because Fred and I did a little business. He and we had, we had two meetings together. So he probably wrote my name once or twice at the very most. God sees you, he yes. knows you, he and I loves see the, you. And I see the piece of paper and I'm thinking, what does this mean? Didn't know what it meant. It would become meaningful later in the fire yes. that you would survive it's it. It's biblical. You it's would biblical. survive it. Bennett, uh, 13, Alec, 10. We have a family picture mm -hmm. taken n not long before the diagnosis. Right. Uh, and we see these precious young boys. They're a lovely family picture here. This is before the time of trial. And then I want you to take another look at these fascinating, you have to read the book, young people. They're just telling them this news. This is an aggressive cancer. The doctors gave you one year to live, two at the most. Mm -hmm. There's not one doctor who did not believe you had a terminal diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Right. How did you tell the boys and what was their response? Well, well, we told the boys in a very direct manner, yes. which I, if I could do it again, I think I would change that. I think I would probably have softened it a little bit no for them. No sugar coating. No sugar coating. It was just very direct. And, you know, we had been living his illness for a couple months. We just didn't know what it was. So um, they were quite, their faith held us and several times in our journey. I mean, the first thing that Alex said, he's 10 years old, was, are you kidding me? You've known this for three days. We should have been praying. His very first response and yeah. Bennett's first response was... That's the 10-year-old. Yeah, that's, that's the 10-year-old. Yeah. And so, and Bennett's first response was, how could you have held this from us? We're a family. And, um, and it was just, it's just who we are. You know, we, we talk about everything. That's where our family is. We're very direct with one another. <laughs> yeah. Which can problems. have its pros and cons. Yeah, yeah. So that's, those are stories for another day. There is so much in the story, but we must not miss the challenge you felt you had to get your hearts ready. You chose battle. You chose to believe God for healing. And, and, and that's not, there are dear saints in the journey who, who did not survive, who, who were called home. Yes. And you know that that's a possibility, but you chose to battle and you felt you had to prepare your hearts. A strong theme in the book is confession and repentance. Yes. You admit that your marriage was not at a high point it really was. when this landed. Mm -mm. We had to clear the decks, Moira. Before, before we launched into healing, before we thought healing could come, we had, to clean, we had to clear our own decks. And that came through confession and repentance. It did. We'd sit down on our couch and write, and write into books and share, share our ugliness with each other, honestly. Our supernatural is his natural. Mm. Yeah. That was your confidence. Yeah. It was tested. Plenty. Mm -hmm. Left lung removed. Correct. It would, uh, you feel the pain today, four and a half years after that surgery. I do. Uh, change your lifestyle. You don't play hockey anymore. You don't run anymore, but you bike. I do. <laughs> you all bike. I yeah, do. we do. In fact, here, we, here you are. Is it at the, uh, the beginning or the end of a 150 mile ride? Breath of Hope Lung Foundation Adventure. You did it again this year. About three weeks ago, yes. Whoa. Look Over two that. days, 150 miles. And we raised, we raised $10,000. We had, then all goes to lung cancer research. We had 25 riders. Mm -hmm. And it was, it's just dear friends and family who've been around me since day one of this journey supporting me in this event and I think that's very important to know too is is a, to have a prayer team behind you. I was just going to say oh Caring goodness. Bridge and Team yeah. Browsen. Team Browsen. Caring Bridge was, was the blog. Honest. 
Caring Bridges, the blog, and anybody can use that blog. Okay. And it's just a place where you can put your story about what's happening to you. And then likewise, people that are supporting you in the journey, they can give you comments and they can pray over you in their little, you know, in their blog responses. And so that kept us afloat, their prayers, and just knowing that we had that type of support around us helped us stay in the game when it didn't look very good. You know, and they were saying, he is the God that healeth. You know, and just remember that he is the God that healeth. So, this type of cancer doesn't have a possibility of remission. No. You are either cured or you succumb yes. to the cancer. So, your medical team used the word cured. cured. Yes. And that came officially August 2014, all clear. Yes. All clear. Yeah. yeah. Tremendous right. story. The spiritual principles, the scriptures, um, the confidence that God is the author of our days, our first day and our last day, not cancer, right. not anything else. Absolutely. I, I just, I'm so thrilled this is at our e-store. Uh, we've just kind of given you the highlights. Uh, Gary is in here too. Rosie, you're the official author. <laughs> but Gary's blog's very vulnerable. Great to hear a man just opening up as you do here. Thank you. Thank you. Because there are a few other guys that need to, to do this heart work. Yeah, that you have you. done. You learned to hear God's voice. I did. In the crucible. I did. What a treasure. Yeah, yeah. Thank you folks so much. Thank you for having us. Praying for healing, not really planning a funeral. That's how confident they were. That's how tenacious they were about holding on to God for all that he would do. Thank you folks. God bless you.